Hey, everybody. Welcome to Board Game Breakfast. I'm Tom Vassell. I am Z Garcia. Hello. Good morning. Despacito. Okay. Anyhow. All righty. Well, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the show, everybody. Um, I'm actually, I'm really pumped today. I don't, it's raining here, like a really dreary type rain. And my wife woke up and said, we're not walking and went back to sleep. And then I was like, I'm awake. I'm ready to go. Which is weird because I'm not normally like that when it rains. Okay. So I don't know what I'm talking about here. But there's two things I want to talk about. Tail. (laughs) So first of all, this Uh show, this episode here is sponsored by Mythic Games. Or more specifically, Hell the Last Saga. Which we... Hell. (laughs) Don't don't be yang hell. Anyhow, um, we... We played this game live through Tabletop Simulator last week. Well, actually, it went up this week on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So you can go watch that. It's on Kickstarter right now, and you should go check it out. We have a link in the description of this video. Also, though, we're having a contest right now during the show. It's only for people if you're watching this live. So this is a reason you should watch these live. Um, and this is for two copies of that game. So you get a pledge level of this game. So all you have to do to enter this contest is to email us at dice tower. I'm sorry, at contest at dice tower.com. And in the subject line, put Viking because it's about Vikings. And Sam played it with us, who works for Mythic, and he's all about Vikings. So just put Vi- Viking or Vikings. I'm fine with either. Put it in the title. And by the end of this show, we'll tell you the two people who won. Oh. So that's one thing. We wanted to thank Mythic for sponsoring the show. And it had a cool yes. contest. And that's a, that's a big game. You can look at that website. This is a big game you can win here for sure. Yeah. Secondly, I want to talk about this here. I'm not wearing it right now because I'm. I want to wear a tie, but I got this shirt here, which says, uh, "Our comeback will be bigger than our setback." So this is from Alliance Games, and they said this to me. They're running um, uh, a promotion right now, talking about how game stores and things are going to come back. They're going to try to be better and cooler than ever after obviously being shut down for a long time to put for part of this alliance is running a very giant auction that's going to be starting up soon all kinds of cool stuff and much of the uh part of the proceeds of that when you when you sponsor this or enter this uh part of the proceeds are going to go to the jack vassal memorial fund so since i'm also the president of that fund i figured i'd mention that here (coughs) it's a really cool thing they're doing here and the jack vassal memorial fund which is here to help people in their time of need. If you are a gamer and you have a catastrophic event in your life that you need help with, go to jackvassal.org and ask for help, and we'll get right on that. All righty. I think that's all the intro stuff we have here. Nice. So now it's time to talk about the news. All righty, so let's uh, take a look here at the news. Some companies are now starting to announce games. They were kind of delaying it a bit, right? Mm -hmm. But we're starting to see some games here. So first we have some stuff from Yellow. This first game is a game I feel like I'm going to really like, and Z's not. (laughs) (laughs) Superfly, which is not about being cool. Instead, it's about, if you can see here in the picture, you have these fly swatters, and you hit the cards you say one two three and you hit the card of your choice i guess the cards will give you points in various ways if you're the only person hit a card you get it if multiple people hit the card there's a die that's on the fly swatter i guess it's in a like a little bubble there or something i'm guessing it's like a popomatic right that kind of little dome and whoever rolls the highest number gets the card unless the number matches the number in the card in which case no one gets the card it's removed from play Once you get five cards, you compare hands, and whoever has the largest collection of cards, all in the same color, all with the same number, or all different, wins the round and gets a token. Now, my only concern, I mean, this sounds super fun. My only concern is it feels like there might be one too many rules. Yeah, yeah, I I hear you. Um, This is, uh, yeah, I like the, the silly nature. I could totally see some people going for that. You're right, this is not really for me, but... I like the idea that there's a built-in tiebreaker to the to the fly swatters. That's a cool like mechanical idea, you know, like like actually production-wise. But I agree with you. Can't we just 
That that I think the one that broke the camel's back there is the or different colors. It's just just you know no colors or numbers or that's it. You know I don't know I don't know I I agree with you there. They are saying H is six and up for this, so maybe it just sounds more complicated than it is. But I'm I'll be happy to watch you play this top. I'm gonna we'll play this live for sure. Alrighty, <laughs> Z's gonna watch with a fly swat in his hand. Halfway through the game, we're hitting each other. Like how many how many games with the kids you're gonna get hit with a fly swatter? <laughs> this is already a big source of debate in my house at home, because mm-hmm. in Florida we have a decent amount of flies that get in the house for whatever reason, and then there's a war. Get the fly, and we do. We kill the flies because we don't want them in the house. But Murder. invariably, then somebody hits somebody else with a fly swatter, which leads to yelling about how gross that is and washing of hands. And then water gets thrown at the other person. Um, and that is the life of a parent. All right. Today, uh, I can tell this episode is going to be filled with uh, vassal anecdotes. <laughs> Maybe. We Flash two eight. already. I'm looking forward to more. <laughs> Flash 8, a quick paced game of elections and currents. Uh, is it elections or elect? Is elections right? I feel like it would be a. That's a, what it says. Did I mean elect electrons? <laughs> I don't know. Keep going. Anyway, it's a real time where you're replicating a configuration while also messing up your opponents in real time. It says it's based on an older classic. I don't know what that older classic is. Do you? No, I don't know. Maybe huh, it's called gonna... Flash Eight. I don't know. Well, let me look it up on Board Game Geek because usually it will say there like this re up Im- implement something else. Right. And it yeah, doesn't it says say anything. This is uh, for one to four players, ages seven and up. It's going to be a quick game, about 15 minutes. Um, this is from Scorpion Mask. Is that right? Yeah. It, they they work with Yellow. Yellow uh, publishes a lot of their stuff. They just did that, um, some of the, some party games and things. And so. Right. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know if I like this or not. I'll have to wait and see the game itself. All right. All right. And then finally from Yellow, Mia London. This is a deduction game that's similar, they say, to Guess Who. You're flipping through accessories belonging to scoundrels, um, and you're trying to catch the person. You're going to identify what the scoundrel looks like in your own book. So it looks like you flip around in your book to build the face of the bad guy. And whoever has the most accessories is the winner. This looks like a kid's game. I can't yeah. tell if it is or not. But if it if it is, this is fantastic. I can see kids well, it's, really liking this. It says it's for two to four players ages five and up. So, yeah, this is for very young children, actually. Uh, it's going to play in about ten minutes. I agree. This looks like a winner. This uh, this looks like the kind of game that parents should definitely get for the, their kids to, to go in, in, in that closet along with, uh, you know, the classics they like to teach. Absolutely. This is the kind of game that you should be, you know, expanding your kids' horizons a little bit instead of teaching them the same old game you played when you were growing up. All righty, Clank Adventuring Party has been announced from Renegade. This is a new expansion uh, from Renegade slash Dire Wolf for Clank. And it's, you know, Clank is that deck building game where you're going down into dungeons. This is going to do a couple things. First of all, it'll have six players. I'm out in that one, but whatever. It adds six characters, each with their own starting deck of cards. So Clank in Clank Legacy and some of the expansions for that Clank Legacy, they had it characters that had their own deck of cards. Mm-hmm. Now they're adding that to the base game. I like that a lot. I like having my own slightly different deck than everyone else. I'm glad this is six players, not because I'm going to play with six players, but because there's six different characters to pick from. Right. So... There's 127 cards in this thing, six unique 10-card starting decks, and then I guess more cards to stick in the game because that's only 60 of the 127 cards. So that's yeah. kind of neat. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really pumped about this. This is the kind of thing I like to see where it's it just it's basically like special player powers. Now, is, you this, uh, play Clank. is this for original Clank, Tom? This is for original Clank. Yes. Got it. Okay. So that also means very soon you'll see the same thing for Clank in Space. <laughs> if this is even a little bit successful. Right. I, sure. I'm excited. I'm hoping. I have no news of this, folks. I'm just making things up. 
but I would love if they announced Clank in Space Legacy. I think mm-hmm. they could, considering how popular Clank Legacy seemed to have been. So, all right. Katara, this is also from Yellow. This one I've seen. Now, that cover is awesome. That cover right? is awesome. I've never seen this. Yeah, they showed this to me at Essen, and it, the unfortunately, artwork-wise, the cover is the best part of the game. The game is about, you know, you're moving little tokens around this board trying to control land, and you're using cards to play, and it's an area majority game, and the game itself looks like one I'm I'm certainly interested in for sure. Um, but man, I kept look I kept going back to the cover like that guy's riding a giant lion and the other guy's a giant buffalo. It's just cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of picture I'd put on my wall. Yeah, that seems really neat. And this of course, is a Seattle two. Always has had fantastic artwork. Two to four players. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. All righty, now moving to Station Master. This is a new and improved edition. The game has already been out from Chris Bayless. This is from Calliope Games. Uh, the original version of this game came from Mayfair Games. Oh, I remember uh, that now. Now that you say Mayfair, now I can see the cover in my head. Yeah. <laughs> now, right. I will say that their um, their comment here, that like this game has stood the test of time. I might argue that that's not 100% true, since I'm pretty sure almost everybody who's watching right now has never heard of it. Right? So I'm not saying... I think they they must mean uh, physically, like the cardboard in the original copies hasn't deteriorated (laughs) yet. Well, I'm looking at Board Game Geek. It came out in 2004. It's ranked 4,997, so it's not that bad, actually. It's in the top 5,000. That's what I would say. Top 5,000 game. (laughs) But again, I'm not making fun of that. Um, I would, I have not played this one and the old version of it looks horrific. So, uh, I'll try the new one out for sure. Cool. Speaking of new versions, we now have a new version of Colt Express. This is Colt Super Express, a very stripped down version of this game. Um, there's no 3d train anymore, which I think is okay. Right. Um, I'd play this, but. Well, you know what? I also scoffed at Ticket to Ride London, you know, right. or New York, which I, or I guess London was, no, New York was first. I scoffed at that, and then I played it, and I was like, oh, this works. I think so this thing- might be a good idea, especially if the price point is right. You know what I mean? You can keep all that cardboard, just lay out some cards. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling this more than you are. Can we, well, no, no, I'm not saying, well, that's true, but can we call this the new trend? Um, Ticket to Ride, Pandemic. Cult Express, yeah, to see games. yeah, the shrinkified effect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <coughs> All right, next we have Nico Harbor from the Wood Games. Um, this is coming out at the Spiel, Essen Spiel, and it's that is a terrifying cover. Really, I like the cover of that oh, game. Oh, I find that cover very creepy. What the, the the penguins are giving you your cards? You drop some cards and they're giving them back to you. Yeah, but they're also trying to murder me. I can tell. Um, we did I don't not. Know. Unfortunately, no, I find that we cover not, really sh- creepy. Me and Z, I'm pretty sure Z played Nico Harbor with me. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident. Is that the we one were not called like a pleasant journey to some place. Yeah, we yeah. were not thrilled by it. It wasn't a bad game. It was just okay type mm-hmm. game. But you never know. A card game version of it. The, the game was a little overwrought when we played it. This might be a more streamlined version. I just won't show Z the cover when we play it. All right. The next game from Delicious Games, Ooh. it's called Praga Caput Regni. I think, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly. And um, that's a cool cover, actually. But this is from Vlad, Vladimir Suchi. And they said... Its weight index will be higher than it was in case of his other games. So if you thought Underwater Cities was too light for you, like a filler, this is this is your jam. <laughs> Got it. I think it's funny because Underwater Cities, I don't consider to be a light game at all. It's a very good game. I like it a lot, but it is not light. Um, <laughs> now, it doesn't seem like it's too long. It says 30 minutes per player, so that's cool. And it has a typical build the castle for the king, blah, blah, blah. Sure, you know. sure. Um, I'm just going to have to wait and see. It's supposed to come out fourth quarter this year. It's definitely a 
must play on demand game for me because Vladimir Succi is one of my favorite designers. Uh, and this looks good, the cover at least. You yeah. know, I, I make fun of the theme, you know, this whole build up, uh, you know, in a medieval town thing. But this one makes it look good. I like the, the look. It's, one, it's beautiful perspective. It's clear. I mean, clearly the uh, the artist is very technically capable. Yeah, it's kind of neat. I mean, I, I like that look mixed with that time period, I think is what it is. Where yeah, it looks well, like a painting I, I, from that time. You know, that's neat. I'm glad we're away from the dour looking guy in the cover. Sure. Yeah. And it told you very little anyway. This tells me more. This gives me grandeur. It gives me scale. Yeah. Right. All righty. Well, I mentioned mini games before and Ticket to Ride were the third one in that series of city games is Ticket to Ride Amsterdam. I fully expect to see at least five more of these <laughs> as the years go by. So this one is in Amsterdam. It is, again, a 10 to 15 minute game, and you're using carts to connect things. It was uh, taxis in New York, double decker buses in uh, London, and now carts in Amsterdam. And so there's a little bit more of a, each one of these has a little twist to it, something that's different. Um, and some of the routes have carts on them and then you get merchandise bonus cards. So you right, can go actually of, It's like a secondary set collection uh, of these cards. But yeah, you're right. You can already read the rule book for this, which I, I took a look at. Yeah, these are neat. I liked London, which was the second more than I liked New, New York, which was the first. So if that trend holds, I should certainly enjoy this. Um, I'm not as excited about the theme for this one. I liked that the other ones were going modern. But yeah, it can go, go anywhere and any at any time. That's kind of neat, too, you know. I'm waiting for a ticket to ride Mars. Now, unfortunately for people in North America, this is coming out in Europe in July. It's coming mm. out in North America in September. So you know there's going to be a lot of imports happening before then because people are not going to be able to wait the two months. Like, oh, I need it now. Yeah, yeah, okay. All righty, let's see. Next we have Hasbro and Pandora have joined forces. So I actually forgot Pandora existed because I've kind of switched over to Spotify. <laughs> um, but you pa Hasbro now has playlists that you can listen to, official playlists for their popular games. So if you have been playing Connect 4 and you're like, man, something's missing. You can go listen to the Connect Four playlist. I don't know why you are laughing. This is an actual thing. <laughs> the thing is, I like this idea. I just don't care about it for these particular games. There's already a board game geek list that I don't remember off the top of my head, but there's like where they make the YouTube playlists and stuff for if you're playing a Western game. Here's some Western music. If you're playing a sci-fi game, and it's really cool. Yeah. I just don't think when I'm playing Operation that I need a soundtrack or Scategories. In fact, Scategories is a party game. What do you need a soundtrack for anyway? And these are also, I mean, from the way they're making this sound, it's actual songs from actual musicians. Like the Lumineers will be featured. Chuck Berry will be featured. That means you're going to be hearing actual songs with lyrics and all that stuff that have nothing to do with this game. If these were instrumental compilations, I might be slightly more persuaded. But as it is, this is just somebody's idea of what kind of song fits the game of life. I'm uninterested. I'm really curious, like, what the uh, the Candyland songs are. What about I'm, Operation? I'm, I'm, hang on. I'm going to look at the, the Candyland one first. So I'm hooking up to Pandora right now. <laughs> I Want Candy. Okay. Pour Some Sugar on Me by Def oh. Leppard. Oh. Yummy from Justin Bieber. Sugar from Maroon 5. Sugar Sugar from the Archies. Watermelon Sugar from Harry Styles. Sweet Dreams Are Made of This. They, they oh, literally put... no. <laughs> Why would you listen to Sweet Dreams Are Made of This? They literally just said... Google songs with candy or sweet in the title, and let's oh, make a playlist. So Boo, Hasbro. Sucks. I'm Nobody's sorry. heard that song? Sweet Dreams Are Made of This should not be played along with Candyland. <laughs> Who am right, I? I could disagree. 
I'm done. This is this is a bad. You started off. This was intriguing, Tom. Uh, uh, ruinous is what I consider this. Oh man. Okay, I gotta look up the operation once too now. I'm sorry. This is this is entertaining Jeez. to me. All right. What do you what do you think? Operation. It's gonna be. Uh, you've cut me deep. Uh, I'm trying to think of like right? some nope. titles like that. Uh, you know, achy breaky heart. Achy breaky heart is on the list. Yes. Um, <laughs> you're not I gonna listen to these songs. Listen to this. So they got Doctor My Eyes, okay, from Jackson Brown. The Operation, Your Body Is a Wonderland, um, Body Party, These Arms of Mine, Legs from ZZ Top, Funny Bone, Cold Hands, Warm Heart, Don't Go Breaking My Heart, Break My Heart, Achy Breaky Heart, On Break My Heart, I Just Died in Your Arms, Cold Little Heart, and Good Lovin'. From the Rascals. <laughs> How come the last one is always like, huh? Huh? Good loving. Why? Like, like the kids are going to, some of these songs, the kids are going to listen to be like, what does that mean, mommy? Like, uh, you don't want to know. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, let's move on, please. This material Girl from Monopoly. All right. All right. Sorry. <laughs> that is the funniest news I've seen in a while. All right, Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. So everyone's been all caught up in Frosthaven, but Gloomhaven's actually going to be released in July 2020. It's an exclusive uh, thing at Target, assuming Targets are open. Well, they probably will be at that point. Okay. And then it will go to other retailers in August. So if you don't like Target, you just got to wait a month. Wasn't there a new Gloomhaven that's supposed to be? This is not it, is it? No, uh, this is the new. This is the new for for new people Gloomhaven. That is what this is. This is not an yeah. expansion. It's a standalone. I'm really pumped about this because I'm. I have not. Uh, it's really weird. That we have this really big dice tower library, and Gloomhaven's not in it because I just can't put this giant game in that has a million pieces and stuff. But this I can put in a dice tower library. I'm hoping. I'm thinking. I'll be honest. Um, I'm thinking I'll probably get this. I I find Gloomhaven as it is, and certainly Frosthaven intimidating like beyond intimidating to get that box and then open it and try to decipher it i feel like i'm going to be doing a lot of heavy lifting to eventually get to maybe some enjoyment i'm hoping this is not that way Ooh, i would like you to do that because you could play this solo that's what i'm saying so if, if we we could both get a copy of this we both play it solo and compare our campaigns that'd be interesting let's do it all right all right, and our last piece of news today, this has already been announced a little bit, but there's now more details. Um, but Days of Wonder has officially announced Small World of Warcraft. Now, right. incidentally, I'm usually kind of, I kind of blow off a lot of IP things. They seem stupid and just tacked on. This one works really well. When I, I mean, at least in how it looks. When I looked at the cover and looked at all the, I'm like, yeah, the, the way that, these creatures come in. It looks like they took a few things from Small World. That I don't know how the race. I don't know if they're compatible. Uh, does it say that anywhere? They're probably careful not to say if it's compatible or not. Sure, right. Because whenever you work with IPs, you can't always say they're compatible. But I wonder if they're new races or if it's just a reskin thing. But the board is definitely different. They definitely have kind of a modular board. So. This is kind of a, I think, a shot in the arm. Small World's a great game. It's been out for a while. To right. see it come out in a new way to an audience who, I'm, this has potential to be big. I think if you get the World of Warcraft people to play Small World, it's a great game. So I'm really pumped I about agree. this. Yeah, I agree. This seems like a good match. You know, some of these, uh, some of these IP sort of, you know, connections that are made in board games feel gimmicky. They feel like, come on, you're 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 stretching. This is not setting off those bells for me. This this makes sense, you know. Um, so I agree. I agree. I, I kind of want to. I, I want to check this out, and I think you're right about it reinvigorating it because I got rid of my small world years ago. But I'm willing to give it another shot within this, you know, in this uh, with this skin, let's say. Yeah. All righty. Well, that folks is the news for this week. Let's jump over to Kickstarter news and we'll keep going.
Hello fellow gamers, so some of you are being released into the world finally, you're getting a breath of fresh air, you're getting to be around people with masks on, and I just want to remind everybody, step one, get a haircut, step two, no wait, maybe step one should be put your pants on. <laughs> Make sure you're wearing the proper attire when you go out. I know we've all gotten lazy, okay? <laughs> but, I mean, I guess we'll just, we'll, you know, just let me show you some clips of my cat for a while, because we don't get tired of that. <laughs> Crikey, as the shark comes into contact with its victim, it is vicious, tearing at its flesh. Nom, 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 nom. I'm not proud of that, but it happened. Featured this week, we have Railroad Inc. Challenge by Horrible Guild that ups your spatial road building for one to four engineers as you'll be navigating new dice configurations and utilizing new structures on the board that give you special effects to use during your game. But that's not all. We got goal cards, a solo teleportation challenge, and way more colored expansions than your average Pokemon game offers. One of these standalone games starts at $20. Speaking of a giant box of standalone expansions I don't have time to list. We have the Blinks game system by Move38 that combines the hypnotic pulse of Rave Lights with the compartmentalized smart board game system as each hex stores a community-made game that uses the other hexes to play it. The mechanics for these games range from group dexterity games to puzzle solving, spatial awareness games, as well as strategic placement games. Now this lit party box starts at $79. And lastly, we have Hell the Last Saga by Mythic Games, which leads two to four Vikings into a horrific tale where they must search for clues for their colony's disappearance for about 90 minutes, as players will be triggering unique narrative-based events from clues they find along the way, acquiring lost heroes through adventure choices, all while being careful not to fall into an ambush, as enemies can target the most vulnerable of members, challenging players to explore the realm at their own risk. Risk in this campaign-based game that starts at $29. Thanks so much for joining me this week, guys. If you want to know more about any of the games that you saw here today, then join me at glorihound.com as we will talk about all of these Kickstarters in depth. And it is a live show, so you guys get to tell me what you guys think about these Kickstarters, if you would back them or not, or we can just talk about random stuff, I guess. I mean, that's always an option. Other than that, I will see all of you guys next week. Usually when we talk about deck building, we're talking about within the game, players are collecting cards to add to their own personal decks and then play the game with those. The cards might have actions on them, the cards might give you points, and the cards might give you different things within your deck. So in a game like Eminent Domain, you are getting cards from a common pool, adding them to your deck, and then drawing a new hand of cards from your deck, playing them to score combos and score points and things like that. Now this would be different than a game like Magic the Gathering or Pokemon or either those those like LCG kind of games where you're building a deck ahead of time. That is technically deck building by, you know, semantics. However, it's not really a deck building mechanic because it's not happening within the confines of the game. It is happening before the game. So I would not consider that deck building. You can yell at me in the comments. Now a game that has pool building is a game that is not necessarily using cards to create your deck. So in a game like Quacks of Quedlinburg, you are going to be drawing these chips to put into your bag. You have a bag, this could be called a bag building game. And so in this one you have a bag, you put the chips in, on your turn you're gonna be pulling the chips out. The same with a game like Orleans or um, Altiplano, it's the same thing, only these are gonna give you kind of actions, where in Quacks of Quedlinburg it's more of like a push your luck kind of game. But it still has that personal pool that you're pulling things out of that other people don't have and you're building that within the confines of the game. That's it.
back. And don't forget, if if you are watching this now and you somehow missed the beginning of the episode, there's a contest going on right now. So go back and real quick, check the beginning of the episode and then come back because you want to win a copy of Hell, The Last Saga from Mythic Games. So, um, all right. So let's get started with this game. This is Z versus you all again. We haven't done that for a bit. We're going to do it, but it's going to be slightly different. Dice Tower is known for its top 10 lists. So this is how it's going to work. I'm going to give you a top 10 list. These lists are all using data from the last decade. They may not be completely currently up to date, but close enough. They're also somewhat US-centric, and I apologize about that. Um, So when I give a top 10, Z will then pick four answers. All right, four answers. And I'll write those down, and then I'll pick four answers from the people. Randomly, I'll just go through, grab one, and then grab four different answers, the next four different answers. You will get one point for each time your answer shows up on the list if it matches the other person. If you match Z, then you both get a point. Actually, hang on. I'm about to delete that because it doesn't matter. You just get a point for each time your answer matches. If there's only two people, the matching the other person doesn't matter. Um, You get a, a point for each time your answer shows up on the list. If you guess the number nine answer, you get two points, and the number 10 answer is three points. I'm just doing that because it's fun. Also, sometimes the number one answer might be more obvious. Okay. Make sense? So you're just picking four answers and trying to get nine or 10. I'm I'm there. I got every rule you just said. Let's go. All right. So when I say this, people in, in in the chat, you can start typing answers out, of course, but just guess one, even though Z is going to be guessing four. So the first three are about, uh, well, the first, uh, is it the first three? Yeah, the first three are about U.S. states. There are 50 states in the union. So you have a one out of 50 chance of, or one out of five chance of getting it right just by picking a state. So it's pretty good odds here, right? What are, what are, what is the question? Well, the first question, I want to know the top 10 states with the most fast food restaurants, but in this case, it's per capita. Like, how many restaurants are there per 10,000 people? So this does not disqualify a small state, per se. Seems real judgy, Tom. Real it does, judgy. It does seem real judgy. But your answers are the thing that are judgy. I'm giving facts. I You're know. The one that's going to call states fat. <laughs> I feel I'm worried about this. <clears throat> okay. Um, fine. So... Z's going to be working on that. Meanwhile, I'll start getting some from different people. Canada is not a U.S. state. (laughs) All right. So uh, let's see. I'm going to go with that and that and uh, some of that. Maybe that. I'm spinning the dial. I got them from people. So I got the people's choice. Z, let's go ahead. All right, I'm going to go with, you ready for this? I am ready. <clears throat> Texas. Texas? Okay, uh, um, let me let me write down the, uh, the people's choice here. Texas was also chosen by the people, by Tim, actually. Texas is not on the list. No points. <clears throat> Next. Georgia. Georgia was only picked by Z, not the people. Georgia is on the list. It's number seven. There are 4.9 restaurants per 10,000 people. Fast food restaurants. All right. Of which Starbucks is one. Ooh, we're bringing that back up, are we? <laughs> <laughs> All right. New Jersey. New Jersey. Also not picked by the people and also not on the list. All right. <clears throat> and my last choice here, um, gosh, I said Colorado. I don't think so, but okay, go ahead. Colorado is not on the list. Also, the people's other three choices here, um, Ohio was not on the list, okay. Illinois, not on the list, and Oregon, not on the list. So you both picked Texas, number seven. The number 10 answer, which would have got you three points, is Kentucky. Number nine, South Carolina. You may notice a theme here. Number eight, Missouri. Number seven, Georgia. Number six, Indiana. Number five, Tennessee. Number four, Oklahoma. Number three, West Virginia. Number two, Nebraska, of all places. And number one, 
with the highest. Nebraska was 5.4 out of 10,000. Alabama is 6.3 out of 10,000. Alabama, the clear leader, most fast food restaurants. <clears throat> All right. All right. Now we're not we're not doing it per capita for this next one. So once again, okay. picking states here. Um, this time we are picking states with the most roller coasters. What states have the most roller coasters? So I don't have numbers on these because they were listed out and I wasn't going to count them out. But there's a lot of amusement parks, obviously, in these different states that also have a lot of roller coasters. So, folks, time to start guessing on what states you think have the most roller coasters. I'll spin my dial here a little bit mm. and get four of them. Congratulations, by the way, to all Alabamians. <laughs> Ah, huh, okay, roller coasters. All right, I got the three from people here. I mean, the four from people. So whenever you're ready. All right, I'm ready. Go. All right, what do you got? I'm going to go with Florida. Okay. That was also picked by the people. And yes, on both lists, and that gets correct. So that's that was number three, actually. All right. Florida's the third most roller coasters. Disney does not have as 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 many roller coasters as you might think. Right. No. Yeah. All right. Next up, California. California also on the People's Choice list. I see what you're thinking and like. That was number two. All right. All right. Then I'm going to go with Oregon. Oregon is not on the list. Sorry. And then I'm going to go with, uh, these other ones are kind of shots in the dark. I'm going to go with uh, Michigan. Ooh, good guess, but not on the list. So let's take a look at the people's other two answers were Ohio, <coughs> which is number four, and Texas, which is number eight. So mm -hmm. that brings the people's total up to five and Z at three. Neither of you got the number 10 answer, which was New York. Number nine. Tennessee, number eight, Texas, number seven, New Jersey, number six, Missouri, number five, Virginia has a lot of amusement parks, number four, Ohio, a lot of amusement parks in Ohio, three, Florida, obviously, two, California, and number one is Pennsylvania. There's a lot of amusement parks in Pennsylvania with a lot of coasters on those parks. Ah, uh, okay, oh, okay, now I know. All right, now we're going to talk about something more near and dear to the heart of many people here. And this is the top 10 states with the most beer consumption. All right. So this is talking going about board by, games for a second. <laughs> the, the states. So this is the number of gallons that are drunk by the average beer consumer per year. Oh, my. So, for example, the lowest one is 2.87 <clears> gallons. The highest one is 4.76 gallons. All right. <laughs> Now it's about to get real judgy. <laughs> I'm not judging here. I'm not judging. I'm just allowing you all to judge each other. <laughs> so. Oh, wow. People have some very uh, strong opinions on this one. Uh, I need and one more. I need one more. Uh, got the people's choice answers. Remember, folks, I am just randomly grabbing these answers. I grab one, and then I grab the next three that follow it. You can stop entering them in because I have them. I fun. got it. Let's do it. All right, it. go ahead, Steve. What do you got? I'm going to go with, I got some repeats on here now that have shown up already. Michigan again. <clears throat> Michigan is not on the list, sadly. What? Not you should be proud of, your, of Michigan. Okay. <laughs> All right, next up, this makes it on the list solely because of Stephen Bonacore, New Jersey. <laughs> well, if you're going by that thing, you should you should be picking Pennsylvania for the secret cabal. But um, no. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you got? No, and I'm gonna go with uh, Washington State. <clears throat> yes, but no. Really? 
<clears throat> okay, and then my last guess is Mississippi. Nah, people there are pretty happy. You got nothing there. Nothing. All right. So the people's choice, they said Massachusetts, not on the list. Alabama, not on the list. Wisconsin was number seven, so people get another one. And they said Texas, not on the list. So the people are now up to six, and you're three. So what were they? South Dakota was number 10. Okay. Idaho, number nine. Alaska, it's cold, so you drink more. Eight. Sure. Seven, Wisconsin. Six, Vermont. Five, Montana. Fourth, North Dakota. I'm guessing if there's not a lot of people around, you drink more? Yeah. Three, Nevada. You didn't think about the Las Vegas factor. Oh, you're right. <laughs> oh, Two, Delaware. Geez. And one, <clears throat> New Hampshire. All right, all right. It's definitely all right, like old states that haven't shown up for other stuff, clearly. And yeah, sort of like the less densely populated, populated states in the, in the middle of the country, yeah. All right, we're going to jump off of um, states here. Now we're just talking about animals. Do we, so I do talk we to about, judge people, though? Oh, well, this is the top 10 animals with the strongest bite. Pounds per square inch. A human bite, you can. We, it, this, they measure that <clears> as 160 <throat> pounds per square inch. I want to know animals that have a stronger bite than a human. Well, the top 10 animals total. From New Jersey. <laughs> From New Jersey. Uh, I'll give you a clue. None of these animals originate. Oh, no, wait, are, yeah, okay, thank you. Originate New Jersey, right? They're in the zoos, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, this one's going to be tricky. Remember, if you get the 9 or 10, which no one has got those yet. <clears throat> and Boom. All right, I got the people's choice. Hang on. Oh, that's all righty. All right, I got the people's choice. All right. I got some weird guesses. Here we go. Go ahead. All right, my number one guess here is I think is I think on the list for sure, and that's gorilla. That's true. It's number six, 1,300 pounds per square inch. Good pick. Those are beasts. All right, next up, uh, horse. No, horse is not on the list. Like a really angry pony. <laughs> oh, angry pony. That's on the list. <laughs> yes. All right, next up, tortoise or, or turtle or whatever, some kind of. Some kind of creature with a shell. Like a snappy bites. turtle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A snappy, bitey turtle. That's not on the list, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. And then lastly, Komodo dragon. Oh, what a good choice. Also not on the list. That's not that good, then. Here's what the people said. They said <coughs> crocodile, oh, that's which cool. is definitely, it's the number one. Actually, it's number one and number two. The Nile crocodile is number one. The saltwater crocodile is number two. 5,000. Pounds per square inch. And saltwater, 3,690. Okay. Then they said Wolverine, not on the list. But then they said Hippo, definitely on the list. 1,825, number four. And then they said Alligator, also definitely on the list. 2,125. They got the top four, Z. Oh, I'm number five, I'm Jaguar. Six, Gorilla. Seven, Grizzly Bear. Eight, Spotted Hyena. Nine, Tiger. And ten, Lion. If you had just gone with Lion, you would have got three points. However, the score is now nine to four. Z, we only have two questions left. You can still pull this off, but <clears throat> no. All right, next one here. Let's go to countries now. The top ten countries with the most skyscrapers. In this <clears throat> instance, we are saying a skyscraper is 150 meters or higher. Okay. The top 10 is not most skyscrapers per, in, you know, per mile, whatever. Just most skyscrapers in total that are 150 okay. meters or higher. Remember, you want to try to get 9 and 10. That's, that's your hope here. Not really. I just want to get on the list. <laughs> I, <clears throat> <laughs> All right. Let me think. Uh-huh. All righty, I have the people's choices. 
I need one more. Let me think here. Uh, I don't know. I'll give you these three, and I'll come up with another one as I go. So my first choice is the United States of America. They're number two on the list. 807 skyscrapers that are 150 meters or higher. All right. Uh, next up, China. China is also on the list. They're number one with 2,177. All right. Okay. Next up, India. India is not on the list, which is also unfortunate because the people said that too. All right. I guess that and makes you happy. You're not getting a point either. Yeah. And then for my last pick, I guess I'll try to go with something weird, something uh, slightly off the beaten path. Ah, something European. I'll go with something European. Germany? Uh, I really, Germany was also said by the people, and I wanted to like shake my head no, because uh, this is not a Europe, European, this is not Skyscraper Central here. Um, skyscraper Central is most certainly Asia. Number 10 was Malaysia. Number nine, Indonesia. Number eight, Thailand. Number seven, Australia. Well, actually, it's a tie. Australia and Canada tie for number six, 111. Okay. South okay. Korea, 221. The UAE, United Arab Emigrants, which the people picked. What? Uh, 253. Japan, 257. USA, 807. And China, 2,177. So here's the good news, Z. You got two points, and the people only got one. Oh, so, I'm coming back. Oh, my god. It's 10 goodness. to 6. Yeah, oh. but you could win on the final round. I could, could also choke on it. All right. Here we go. This so, better be about animals and tall buildings from states I love. This is a, another country one. And this data is, unfortunately, this data only goes up to 2016, but it should oh. be close enough. I want to know the most countries from between 1900 and 2016 have had the most earthquake. Now, these are... Fairly sizable, not the, like the daily shaking that happens in California, but sizable earthquakes here. There are actually 12 countries on the list because there's a tie for number nine, a four-way tie for number nine. So what countries have had the most earthquakes between okay. 1900 and 2016? Uh-huh. Um... Jeez. All right. I got the people. Why? So since it's a four-way tie for number nine, you have a good chance to get a lot of points here. If you picked all four of those countries, uh -huh. that'd be eight points. You would uh -huh. clearly win. Oh, okay. I'll give you some hints. I'm going to tap them out in Morse code. I don't know Morse code. <laughs> I know. S, O, and S. You do? Go ahead, Tom. Go ahead. Stop nope, that's a, that's, a, that's a little beat. That's a little beat you got going on. No, that's not even, that's not even right. It's Anyway, just go. Sorry. No, I was it's supposed to be like this. <laughs> it's three... It's, it's three, three, short, three, 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 long, three short, three long, three short. short. Yes, I can't I'm do sorry. it, but I need to, I need I I left my uh, Morse code machine outside, but if I had it here, I could be like do 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 like that. I think you're stalling. What do you got? Of course I'm stalling. I need a fourth country. Give me a hint. Do they have a lot of earth shaking near fault lines on the earth? Now, I'll give you one hint. Four of these start with the same letter. Four of them. Ooh. That's such a good hint. Is the letter W? Now, if I told you the letter, you would know all four countries. <clears throat> all right. I would. Um, I really don't know, so I'm going to go with uh, some garbage. Okay, let's do it. Go ahead. <clears throat> okay, my first pick is Mexico. Mexico. Is tie for ninth place. That's two points, Z. Killed it. Uh, next up, uh, Australia. 
Australia's not on the list, but you got Mexico, so keep that in mind. All right, next up is... Keep that in mind, he says. <laughs> I think there's a hint. Oh, geez. What country is no, that? No, 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 that wasn't a hint. I was just trying to encourage you, oh, even okay. though you just failed miserably. Fine, Turkey. Turkey is on the list. It's number four. And lastly, I'm going to say Iceland. Oh, all right. No. I, I said Ireland, by the way. <laughs> so, so that is... Actually, it's funny because I would have told you the four would start the same letter as I, and you would have said Ireland and Iceland then for sure, and neither one of them's on the list. Uh, so Z's total is nine. So you've already lost, but let's see what the people said. They said Italy. Italy was number eight on the list. Oh, they okay. said USA. USA was number seven on the list. They said Chile, not on the list. And Japan, number five. So the people's final total is 13. The other right. ones tied for number nine was Afghanistan, India, Greece, and Mexico with 32, Italy with 33, USA with 41, Peru, 44, Japan, 61, Turkey, 77, Iran, 106, Indonesia, 113, and China, number one with 157. Mm. Folks, you win 13 I to nine. I should have thought of Peru. That's one that escaped my mind. Peru, I should have known. All righty, stuff. folks, congratulations. Let's go to some contributors, and it's back for you to help me beat Z. Let's do it. Howdy, folks. Welcome by the numbers. My name is Hunter Thomason from the Family Showdown. This week on By the Numbers, we're continuing my Through the Year series, where I look the best game on Board Game Geek by year, starting with 1970. This time, 1993. Take a look at the top five. We see the number one game from 1993 is Magic the Gathering, coming in at number 151. Magic the Gathering is a collectible card game. It's still going strong after all these years. It has over 20,000 different cards. I myself was a Magic player way back at the very, very beginning. I had a pretty decent collection back in the day. In fact, when I got heavy back into board gaming around 2015 or so, I sold off most of the valuable cards in my collection to start another collection. Take a look at the ratings, over 30,000 ratings, lots of 7s and 8s for an overall rating of 7.5. Take a look at the weight, it comes in at 3.2, which might seem a little high for a simple card game, but there is a lot of terminology. In doing a little research on this game, I decided to dig up some my old magic stuff. I still have some hanging around. In fact, I found, I have a first edition. It's beat up and tore up and not in very good shape. First edition, Magic the Gathering Pocket Player's Guide. And I still, I still have two big giant boxes full of magic cards. I'm sure magic collectors would cringe that I just threw them in boxes. I stopped playing Magic way back in the late 90s. I haven't really touched it since. I've had the itch to maybe put a deck together now that I've dug through some cards, but maybe not. See you next time. Welcome to Survey Says, where we survey you listeners and we discuss the results. We're the Board Game Weekenders. I'm Colby. And I'm Steven. In this week's episode, we asked, how often do you visit the Board Game Geek website? When I look at the graph, I'm not surprised that we see about the same number of people um, once a day and a few times a week. I personally fall under once a day category. I like to check the hotness and everything um, on there, kind of like that front page, see what's going on. I would agree. And you'll see that there's only four that answered more than once a day. So I think those might be publishers or people who are very active in the forums or files and uploading stuff. So I think that's pretty representative of, you know, the board game hobbyists in general, I would say. Right. And I think if we had more than 38 people answer this, we'd probably see these rise uh, at about the same levels that they did here. Yeah, I would agree. I also found it kind of surprising that out of all the responses, no one said that they had never visited the website, which right. 
I'm sure there's varying degrees to how much they visit it, but still everyone has at least seen it, which again, I think shows the power of Board Game Geek um, as a tool for reference and uh, advertising for publishers and so on and so forth um, for them to see information about games. I wonder too, if just the huge glut of games that's coming out in the cold of the new, if that's played into people just accessing it more and more often than the way they have in the past. Thanks for checking out this week's episode. Let us know your thoughts on the results in the comments below. Look out for next week's survey on Twitter at BG Weekenders. And make sure to tune in for next week's episode of Survey Says. Thanks. Hi, everybody. We are Ryan and Bethany from Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews, except Ryan has been taken over as we talk about Loop and Chewy. Are you okay in there? Okay, so Loop and Chew is a really fast dexterity game. Um, so you have these guys that you're trying to protect, and uh, Chewie is on this motor thing, and he's going around knocking down the bits. Basically, last man standing wins. This game is a blast. It is so funny when we play. It's just absolutely hilarious. We've never played this game, and A, not played it again, and B, not laughed the entire time we were playing it. Yeah. It's super hot in there. You did a good job. You, yeah. did, you did as far as you could. I, sorry I couldn't make it longer, guys. All right, so my thoughts on Lip and Chewy. Yeah. As Chewy embodied, <laughs> <laughs> this game makes no sense. <laughs> the theme yeah. is just weird. You're somehow like teaming up with Chewy, but you're also trying to protect the stormtroopers. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's just so wacky and so much fun. I mean, everybody around the family can play this. It takes... A couple of seconds to learn and two, three, four minutes to play. Yeah. So is, by the time this review is done, you could have already played a game of Loop and Chewy. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really true. If you want to hear our full thoughts on this, go ahead and find us on YouTube or on Facebook under Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Hope you have a happy and healthy breakfast. Bye. Bye. Time for twenty questions. Yeah. All right, before we, we do twenty questions, go. no. I want to quick. I want to remind people there's a contest because this is your last chance. Enter. Of course. Go yeah. back to the beginning of the episode. There's your chance to find out how to enter. Watch it there. Meanwhile, let's go and let's whoop on Z. Well, you're gonna whoop on me, are you? I don't think so. You've got twenty questions to guess what game I have pulled from my uh, library of mystery. Is the <clears throat> theme song for the game "Sweet Dreams" or "May"? I need to know the theme song. Yes, that's the theme song. Sweet dreams are made of. This does actually sound like a game show where you could play songs until we guessed what the game is. That is that true. Four sets, right? That's true. Yeah, it's Hasbro's always thinking, man. They're really on top of it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, you folks are going to be giving the questions that Tom may ask in the comments. He can only ask me those. You've got twenty questions here. I've got the tokens. That you are uh, going to be burning through. So I got 20 of these, Tom. One per question. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. <laughs> Many are nothing. We're, we're starting to get a little inside joke here on the comments. First question was, is it raw? Then the second one was, does it contain a tungsten dice? <laughs> I'm just asking the questions as they come up. So we'll start with Scott's question. Are there dice in the game? Uh, uh, no. I should probably open. No. All right, then I will draw a chip. I have it right here. You mean you want to flip it? Yes, please. You're a lucky oh, dog. Yeah! Here we go. Sweet dreams <clears throat> are made of chips. Who am I to disagree? Give me a letter on the seven C's. If it's C, that would be awesome. The letter is H. H as in hate you. Wait, folks, I just noticed hate's off Z shelf. It could be hate. Could It could be <laughs> hate if I grabbed an expansion box to trick you. All right, I have a... I'm going to give you 10 seconds, Tom, to answer something for me. And if you do so, within those 10 seconds, I'm going to give you another letter. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let me pull up 10 seconds. And, Tom, 
I would like you to name four in ten seconds. I want you to name four Oink games. Go. Oh, um, fake artists went to New York. Um, uh... Oh my, I don't know enough Oink games. You're out of time. I'm not even close on that one. All right, Tom, you don't get another letter. Keep going, you <laughs> sucker. <clears throat> All right. I'm Oof. just asking questions as I see them. Jacob, is it a deck builder? No. You got to let me know All if you right. want to flip the chips. Give me a chip. Nothing. Keep going. All right. Does it have miniatures, says Elliot? No. Flip the chip. Negative one. That means you lose another chip. Ah. You are down four questions. You have 16 left. Go. Alex says, is it from 2019 or later? Like newer than 2019? No. Oh, 2019 or 2020, basically. No. No. Flip the chip. Nothing. You're five down. Go. All right. We're just going to keep, we're going <clears> to <throat> do this. That you know of, Alpha wants to know, has it won any awards? Um... I don't care if it won a small award that no one's heard of. Like that I know of, no. Uh, okay, it down. It's on our recommended list for something, so no. But but no, no way. <laughs> yeah, because there's so many recommended lists out there. <laughs> you want to flip right. this? Let's flip it. Nothing. Keep going. You're six down. Matt wants to know: Is it, was it on Kickstarter? No. All right, I'm gonna skip that chip. Oops. What does that mean? That means you're All right. Up. Sean says, does it have a solo mode? No. Flip it. Nothing. Oh, my goodness. Nothing. Drop it. Three. Pull it. <laughs> Twist it. You're down eight questions. Go. Scott says, does it have individual player boards? Yes. Ooh, that's the first yes we've gotten, folks. I feel I feel like I, I flipped the chip. That's bad. This is a negative one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you are down, my friend. Half the chips, I believe. That is right. Uh, you uh, are halfway through everything you can possibly ask me, and you have no clue, do you? Do no, you? That's, I'm not worried about it, though. <laughs> uh, I'm just asking the questions I see. Is the publisher publisher Fantasy Flight Games? Is the publisher Fantasy Flight Games? No. Flip the chip. That is a five, my friend. You get a letter. Give me a letter. Let it be A. Give me an eight. This next letter brought to you. Hey, Garcia, by... you're so fun. You're so fun. You blow my mind. Give me eight. Piggy chow. The letter is G. G as in, good night, you're never going to get this. All right. Nick says that's okay, the game. Hold on, buddy. I, got, I want to give you a chance for another one. You don't want another one? Oh, I forgot about this 10-second thing that I was so yeah. good at. Here we go. You have 10 seconds, my friend. <laughs> you give me four games that are set on Mars. Go. On Mars. Terraforming Mars. Mission Red Planet. Ah! Red Planet. I don't even know if that's a game or not. <laughs> I don't know anymore. You could have just said Mars. That's a game set on Mars. Mars? <clears throat> There's also Dig Mars. There's also Magic Maze on Mars. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. All you right, got fine. three. You're a sucker. I'll give you three quarters of a letter. It starts with a squiggle, and then there has a straight part, and then one bend in it. That's it. <laughs> Keep going, you dork. I'm kidding. <laughs> God. Does it have expansions? Says Nick. Uh, 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 no. All right, flip it. Nothing. Flip it. All right. Um, You're down 12. You've got eight left. Go. Uh, Ian says, is it worker placement? Is it worker placement? Let's find out what BGG says, shall we? No. 
All right. Flip it. Nada. How many chips I got left? Down. All right, all right. You got Ooh, one, Chris two, says, three. Is, it, oh. is it the standard box size or bigger? That means ticket to ride. Is it stand? Is it ticket to ride sized or bigger? Bigger. No. Ooh, that's a good one. Flip that chip. It means Nothing. it's a negative thing. Oh, every time we have a good question, it's a negative thing. You are um, down to six questions, my friend. You will be relinquishing your soul for consumption. Is, oh, I didn't. I didn't sign nothing. Is it fantasy themed? Uh, yes. Ooh. Flip it. That is a five. That means. Give us, give us letter a letter. Time. Give us a it's letter. letter time. Oh, I then after this will challenge you to playing a fiddle. Give me a letter today. I want. The letter is E, as in this should be easy. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, Tom, you have 10 seconds, my friend. Do it. To give me four. Extinct collectible card games. Go. Uh, Shadow Run, uh, Star Wars collectible card game, Star Trek collectible card game, Overpower. And if that doesn't work right, then we also have uh, Netrunner, not Android. Uh, or I could even, yeah, well, that's fine. I said five. I'm good. You did. You're good. You got it. I am proud you know what? of you. You know what? I, I actually joined a Facebook group called Dead CCGs. So I've been following that for a little bit. I like that stuff. So here we go. You got another letter. Oh, listen Lord to Lord that Jihad. tension, the tension, the fear of the spin. I don't think I've been telling you that one of these spots actually says you lose. You haven't had okay. it yet. I'm fine. All right. The letter you got is I, as in I might lose, but I don't got know. it. All right. Next question. Go. Brian says, uh, can Tom play this with his kids? They do whatever you want, bro. Would you recommend I play this with my kids? I do not under. presume to tell you what to do with your children, Thomas. You've wasted a question. Next. <laughs> Kidding. Yeah, sure, you can play with the kids. Oh, that I wasn't expecting. All right. All right, all right. Are you going to flip this chip? Because, I mean, you've got to be careful. No, I'm not flipping it. I'm not Ooh. flipping it. All right, you got five. No, nope, four left. Is it co-op? It is not co-op. I'll flip that one. That's a bad idea. That's a negative one. <laughs> you have two questions left instead. Um, was it published before 2012? No. <laughs> I'm not flipping that one. All right. And you have one question left. And then, of course, your, uh, your usual final guess. Uh, what do you got so far? What do you know, Tom? What do you know so far? Okay, it's there's no dice. It's not a deck builder. No minis. It is between the years 2012 and 2018. It's not won any awards, but it wasn't a recommended list. It was not Kickstarter. Doesn't have solo mode. It does have individual player boards. It's not Fantasy Flight. There's no expansions. Doesn't have worker placement. It's not a standard box size, so it's a small game, a smallish game. Uh, it is Fantasy. Kids can play it, not co-op. Sounds good. You should know what it is. I feel like that is a lot of good information, but I don't have it narrowed down at all, and I'm expecting the people here to do the heavy lifting. So, um, you got one good question left in you. Figure out what it's going to be, buddy, because that's it. And then after that, I I'm want asking my answer. The next, I'm asking the next question that, that, that works here. because. Oh, what if it's like a dumb question? Like, uh, is it Fantasy Flight? <laughs> well, no, I'm not. I'm not doing that. Is like, it um, um? Is it is it um? Fa fantasy. <laughs> All right, like fine. He put it in capitals. I don't know that this is going to help anyone here, Elliot. But he wants to know very loudly: Does it have hand management? Why is Elliot screaming at you? I don't know. Also, does Elliot realize that hand management is real loosey goosey? I'm not arguing that. That's what you're going with? Are you sure, Tom? That's I said I would ask the next question. All right. No, it doesn't have hand management. <laughs> um, and you want to flip this chip, of course, because the last one, yes, there's a negative one on it, and there's nothing to 
get rid of. So wait, so it. the two chips I skipped? Did I skip that first one where you said, "Uh oh, was that a red chip that I skipped?" You sure did. <laughs> oh well. All right. Let me hear. What do you think it is? Well, I got to think about games that you would pick that that you own too. So that's kind of thrown in the mix here. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And I'm assuming you're picking games with more letters in them nowadays than not because you don't want us to get six or seven letters and then know the whole word. It's also a good idea. Everyone was thinking for a while that was ghost stories, and then your kid comment knocked that out. But it had fit everything else. We also asked if it was co-op. It's not co-op. No, but we asked asked the co-op after that. Okay. Um. I don't think that's good there. Someone said 8-Minute Empire, but I don't think Z has 8-Minute Empire. Don't have Maybe that, no. But I'm not <clears> guessing <throat> that. The one game I want to guess, I don't know if you have or not. I don't even know if you like it or not. I have it. Ooh. No. No. Maybe? What, is no, it, what do you think game. it might be? What are you, say, what are you thinking? Well, I'm just going to guess so that we're not going to keep dragging us out here. I'm going to guess... No one's giving me any games. Okay. Both you have to give me a game to guess here. So well, what's the one is, you think I might not have, but you have, and you think it could be? Welcome to the dungeon. That's but that doesn't have individual player boards. It doesn't have individual player boards. Yeah. So never mind. I'm I'm, I'm, also, t- I'm not doing that one. But forget. It seems like I think you might be trending too small. You said smaller than Ticket to Ride. Doesn't All right. Someone gave me. Someone gave me a guess. I'm doing it. Go. I don't know if that's fantasy or not, though. If you're not sure, then it's not it. Well, you could argue that it's fantasy. All right, I'm guessing it. Go. Sheriff of Nottingham. No, but this box has a lot of green on it. That doesn't help me out at all. Really? Friedman Freeze? No. Ooh. I would not have guessed that in like another 30 guesses. <laughs> That's a Come good game, on, though. Come on, man. It's Gingerbread House. Oh, there was Can a I question that I, I skipped by that asked about tile laying. You would have said yes on tile laying, and that would have really oh, helped definitely out. definitely said yes. That is absolutely a good one. Yeah, tile laying for sure. Um, 2018, did not win any awards or anything. Most of, most of the Phil Walker Hardings, most of his games that aren't this, get a lot more recognition than this one did. So he had Imhotep got a lot of love and uh, silver and gold lately. But this one's kind of one that got a little overlooked, but it's a great tile laying game. Baron Park got more love than this. Yeah. We did a review on the Dice Tower, folks. You can check it out. All righty. Well, let's jump, actually. Now we have some more contributors, and then we'll come back and find who won the contest. All right. Here we go. Happy breakfast, everyone. This week, I'm going to talk to you about Metro X, which is a flip and write game uh, that's just come out in English, although it was previously available in Japanese. You're going to be effectively flipping cards over. Uh, Everyone around the table uses that card and then so on and so on to fill in these subway uh, metro routes. Uh, It looks like an underground map, a metro subway map, the way uh, the colours all work uh, and it's a very nice clean appearance. That's great, the gameplay is great, but what I really like and I think it does better than a lot of Roll and Writes is that it helps itself stay on the table by having two different maps. Most Roll and Writes I play through and I think, right, that was a really good experience, I'll play that again at some point. With Metro X, I finish one side, you finish the game, you work out who won, and then you want to turn the board over and play the other side. Now, welcome to uh, another flip and write, uh, which is on the shelf somewhere. Um, That does it by having expansion packs. So you've finished the normal one, then you maybe go and get ice creams, the summer one, the spring one, the Halloween one, whatever. This does it straight away out the box, and it's not a pad of paper, they are wipeable boards, which give it sort of a premium feel compared to the padded score sheets. Less disposable in in a way. It's got the ability to play for 20 minutes, play one game, and you're done as a filler, or you could double that time and play for 40 because it comes with two maps. 
Anyway, that's Metro X, a new flip and write game from Game Right, uh, and I'm Oliver East signing out. Hi folks, I'm Andy and welcome to Portable Gaming's Change of Venue, a segment where I talk about board game IPs that I love as board games but think would also work well in other mediums. And today I want to talk one of my favourite games which is Dungeon Lords. Now Dungeon Lords by Vada Chital is essentially a love letter to Dungeon Keeper which is one of my favourite PC games of all time. And because of that I'm not going to send it to the video game world, I'm going to send it somewhere else. But to give you an overview, Dungeon Lords is a game where you are trying to build the best possible dungeon by hiring monsters, building rooms and traps and trying to stop heroes from destroying it. The less damage the heroes do and the more heroes you take out, the higher you score and the closer you are to getting your dungeon license. And that's kind of where I'd like to set this, but in the weird world of children's television. So I can just see it now, if we tailor it a bit, so the idea that the Dungeon Lords and the heroes are at odds, not because of good versus evil, but the idea they are both preparing each other for going out to do what they have to do in the wider world. And you have this almost school rivalry vibe, so we can follow the heroes, we can follow the, the Dungeon Lords and the monsters. If they play planks on each other, they try to get under each other's skin, figure out their weaknesses and have these kind of comical battles all the time. So no one really gets hurt, it's all slapstick humour. The idea being once they've all passed, they get to move on and do something more heroic for the rest of the world. I think it'd be great fun, there'd be tons of characters we could explore, and alongside all of this would be the imps. Now imps are a key resource in the game, and they're also the key part of the spin-off Dungeon Pets. Imps are adorable, and I'm not going to lie, they would have the same kind of marketing potential as minions, and they got spun off into everything. So I can just imagine now we could have spin-offs of Dungeon Pets where they do run the pet shop that they run in the second game, which is amazing. We could have them run other things, running restaurants, Imps running travel agents, imps running magic shops, anything and everything can all be spun off. Dead easy, have tons of fun with that. You can have that lovely thing where you pitch the jokes at adults and kids, so there's something there for everybody. But what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Would you watch this show? Do you think that would be any good? Anyway, I've been Andy. It's your round. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Doug Jr. And that's not Doug the Third, but you are still watching A Fellowship of Meeples with Doug and Doug Gaming. This is my youngest daughter, Brittany, and I know she looks 12. She's actually 19. As I was saying last episode, sometimes it's important that we compromise, let the other people pick the games they want to play. I'm going to find out what game Brittany wants to play, but I've decided to make a little game out of this. I have predicted what game I think she's going to pick, and I'll see how accurate I am. So, Brittany, go to the shelves, pick out the game you want. If you need help, if you're too short, let me know. <laughs> Brittany has picked out... Ticket to Ride, and we did play this not too long ago. I think your 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 boyfriend was over here. We played Ticket to Ride with him and you and mom, I think. So, yeah, this is a good game. What do you like about Ticket to Ride? It's easy. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs> so he doesn't, you know, and that's that's fine. And you know what? I enjoy Ticket to Ride because while it is easy to play, there is some strategy involved. So I can get into it as a person who likes strategy. We call this a gateway game sometimes because it gets new people into the hobby, but. Uh, um, but yeah, it's a great game. Now, I'm going to show you what game I guessed. And I guessed, yeah, uh, World's Fair 1893, because we used to play that a lot. You did like that, and you were very good at it. You still are. Um, however, my second guess was Ticket to Ride, but technically I lose because I didn't get it on my first guess. But uh, both of those are good games. But yeah, you know, sometimes you just can't beat a classic. So Ticket to Ride is a great game, and there's a lot of options with it, a lot of uh, a lot more countries and tracks that I can collect. So um, definitely, it's a good game. I enjoy World's Fair. So that was Brittany's pick. I lost this one. I'm going to try again with somebody else, another family member, and see if I can guess what game they would most like to play. But for now, I appreciate you watching A Fellowship of Meeples with Doug and Doug Gaming. I'll see you next time. Alrighty, everybody, that's the end of another show. So there's a couple things. First of all, we want to say a big thank you to our sponsor of this show, Mythic Games. Go yes. check out Hell, The Last Saga right now on Kickstarter. Again, the link is below. But two of you have won, and those winners are Tristan Stabenow, or Stabenow and Jeff Stewart. Congratulations. We'll get you an email and hook you up so that you can get that. But everyone else, you still can get the game if you want to. Congratulations Second. to our winners. That's right. Woo! Secondly, we'll be back at 2 o'clock, only a few hours away, with Jamie Kagey from The Secret Cabal talking about our top 10 games we want to see a second edition for. One of those games, my number one, is the 20-question game we just played. 
All right. So I'm spoiling. Are you spoiling want, things? What? I want to see a second edition with a new host is what I want. Oh, you meant my game, not the game I featured. Oh, my heart. Ah! <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Uh, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. Oh, I'm Z Garcia. Goodbye. Have fun gaming. <laughs>